Hi everyone, Gretchen here. Sorry for those issues. Hopefully everybody can find me now. It's always something, you know? You think you know what you're doing and then all of a sudden disaster strikes and you realize you don't have a clue. you're ready to go um, just be careful when you're opening up your envelopes of supplies because there's um, a lot of little pieces uh, especially these little flowers here that can get easily lost but what I'm doing is taking out my um, my chicks so we can get ready to color them I figured we'd color first and then um, put the cards together so this is just some scrap paper here I'm going to use. Oh, good. Hi, yeah. Hi, Sam. It's good to see you. I'm glad you found us. Um, I am just waiting for um, a couple more people to find me. For some reason, Judy's having trouble. I, um, I just got out all my three little chicks here, Sharon, um, so I'm ready to color. And if you're going to, I don't know how you're going to color, but if you're going to use paints, make sure you have some water um, with your paintbrushes. Oh, good, Kathy, you found it too. Oh, yeah, it was quite an experience, Kathy, believe me. Oh, good, Mom's here. Um, yeah, Mom, Judy said she was having trouble getting on, and I'm, I'm not quite sure. I sent her the link directly. I'm not sure why she was having trouble to it.
Oh, that was reminds me of one more thing I was going to show you. Let me grab it. Yes, it's all scrappy salt. Okay, Judy's here too. Okay, so I think we're all here. Um, everybody who's going to tune in live. Um, so what I, sorry about that. Basically, when I was about to, to log in, I knocked down my camera. So then I had to reset my camera, except when I went and started the live stream, it defaulted to my face on camera instead of my overhead camera and I couldn't figure out how to change it. So I had to stop the stream. And then once you stop the stream, you can't get back to the same link. So that's why I had to set up the new link just to make it, you know, extra complicated. And then I got something on my shirt. So I had to go change that and get that to soak because I didn't want to sit through the whole class. So, you know, that that's, you know, the craziness that is today, I guess. So, um, all right, so I know um, Kathy and Sharon, you're both using pencils. Um, I'm not sure what everybody else is using, but I am gonna stick with the three different varieties just to give you some um, tips on each of uh, the coloring techniques if I can um, help you out with any ideas. So I'm going to do watercolors first because, um, actually that's kind of silly. If I know you're doing pencils, I'll do the pencils first. I was going to say I'll do the watercolors so it has time to dry, but let me do the pencils first since uh, you guys are going to be using pencils. And the one I did pencils with is um, this, the graduation one cool chick. And I'm going to show you if you don't have need for a graduation card, we could just make it a regular card. Now I have regular color pencils and these are the ones I like, but any of them work. The, the Prismacolor are my favorite. I've had this set since college. Um, but I also have this other set and um, close to my heart did sell these. I have to look if they're in the new catalog because uh, there's a new catalog coming out next month and I haven't finished going through it all. But these are called um, watercolored pencils and they are unique because you can use them as regular colored pencils and you can leave them as that or you can add water to them to blend it as more of a watercolor. Um, so I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll use these and then I can show you. Um, now, one thing when you are using um, watercolors or um, any these pencils or um, alcohol ink markers, you're going to need a permanent ink. And um, because if you add our regular inks, regular dye-based ink pads um, are water activated, they're water-based. So if you were to, um, to add water to them, uh, they're gonna run. And so obviously you don't want them to run. So these chicks were all stamped with the, um, and this is the old style pad, but this is the Close to My Heart Archival Black. Now there's also an extreme black, um, there's stays on ink, there's other, um, I'm blanking on, there's a Versa, I'm blanking on the name of it now, but there are other ink pads out there, but you want to make sure it's an archival um, that is appropriate to use with water so they don't run. Otherwise you're going to get a lot of gray in um, in your image, which you don't necessarily want. So I did the graduation check with the colored pencil. Now, um, I'm just going to start lightly here. And that's what I do with colored pencils. I always 
try to start with a light hand. Um, you can go in right away and make it dark. The one thing I love about colored pencils is you can get so many color variations with just the one pencil, depending on how much pressure you put on it. I like the lighter look, um, so that's why I go in. And and if you go in with the with a light hand, and then you decide you want a deeper color, you know it's always easy to add more. Now we, I have uh, with color pencils, you can erase them. You can't erase the color totally, but if you find that you've gone in too heavy or you don't like a color in a certain area, you can, can use a regular um, pencil eraser, although I like these um, white erasers that are on lead pencils. Um, it won't erase the color totally, but it'll erase it enough to either give you a, a lighter shade or um, if you were to color over it with a, with a darker color, it'll, it'll give you that look. It'll help you out there. So I'm just going over it again. And I try to go um, do the whole area in uh, one direction. I don't, you know, I don't go, oh, let me color this this way and then color this this way. Now, because um, you're going to see those, those lines. Now, if you color it really heavy, you can go over it in different directions and cover up those lines and you get that bold, really bold color. So if you wanted that bold color, absolutely go for it. But if you want a lighter shade, um, I do try to, to stick to all to one direction. And it's of course, big on, um, you know, on a, a design this big, he's a, I mean, he's a little chick, but it, they're big areas to color. So, and then the nice thing about, again, if you, you know, you, you use lighter shading, you can then go in with heavier strokes. Like I'm going over these little feather lines in his, his chest and his um, tail feathers, and you can kind of add some shading. by putting in bolder colors, like right under his little wings, cause that would be, you know, shadowed area. And then, you know, a little under, right under his glasses here, because if the sun was coming down at him, that would, he would have some shadow under there, under his, his little beak, you know, maybe his little eyebrows and then, oh, do, do birds have eyebrows in this world? I guess they do. Um, and then I'm going to make his beak orange. So there you go. I'll, um, I'll go ahead and color one in really um, a really deep color too, just so you can see the difference, decide what you like. And then of course you see this one, this guy, is just stamped on yellow cardstock. So something like this, where he's essentially yellow, um, if you don't want to do all this coloring, this is a great option. Now I can just go in and add some orange on his beak again. And hey, how much time did that save you? You know, you can you can go in and add that um, that kind of shadowing colors, tail feathers, a different color if you want. And so he would look a little more detailed, but you can have to color it in if you don't love coloring. So um, here we go. Now, one thing, if you're doing a lot of coloring, the heavier you press, the harder you press, the quicker your hand's going to get tired too. So you're not going to be able to color as many if you were doing a whole stack of these. I guess unless your hand's in really good shape. OK, 
gets with the yellow, you don't really have to worry if you color over those lines. You're not really going to see that, but it's just habit. I avoid them. You also don't want to, you don't have to worry about the colored pencils as much. Um, um, activating the ink of the, um, on those, on the stamped image, but it could. So it's another reason I try not to color over them too much. Oops. So my point is a little dull there. So I colored outside the lines. So I can go in and try to erase that. Trouble is that I colored really heavy. Okay, so it's gotten some of it. So it's a little lighter, so it doesn't look quite as bad. And then speak again. So there you can see the difference between a really heavily colored chick, and I actually like him. I like the bold color there. And then the lighter one. Yes. Sharon, when you're just too lazy to color it. And I just saw Kathy's, yep, <laughs> obviously the beaks are orange. Um, okay, so here I'm going to show you on the lighter colored one, this, this is a watercolor pencil. So I am going to... Um, With, with a little bit of water on my paintbrush, I can go in and blend that coloring and it will look like I painted it. And so this is the beauty of the watercolor pencil. You don't, if you don't have a lot of control with the brush, you can color like a pencil and then you could go in and add the water. Just trying to get some more color here. And what would be the shadow? And that looks like you watercolored it. So I, I know on the camera you probably can't tell a whole lot of difference, but this was this the card the completed card was done with a colored pencil, and then this one was just pencil and then water. So I really, um, I haven't used them a whole lot lately, but I really love my watercolor pencils. Okay, now I'm going to go to actual watercolors. And these are the watercolor paints that close to my heart sells. Um, it's a pretty big palette. Lots of colors there. Um, and this is, um, you could use a water regular. Um, oh, good, Sharon. So hopefully maybe this will encourage you to use them. Um this is a water brush. So you can see, you can untwist the cap. You can fill this with water and um, your water's in your brush for you. And then you, you squeeze and you'll get a little water. Now, um, these are great for larger areas, but I, when I was coloring these samples, I did notice I didn't have a lot of control with the water. A little too much water was coming through. So I'm, I'm actually using it as a regular brush and just dipping it in the water, you know, like you would a regular paintbrush. So um, gives you two different options there. But I really love like if you're making a big brushed background and you need to have a lot of water, it's really convenient to have it in the brush for you. 
<laughs> now with, I'm going to use this medium yellow here. Um, with a watercolor, you again have um, options on how bold you want the color. So I'm adding um, water just to the palette and it's, it's pretty thick because it's not that much water on a lot of paint. So when I paint with it, it's actually going to be pretty bold um, and pretty thick. And you can actually see the texture of the paint and feel it once it dries if you use it this way. If you want, um, again, more of that translucence that watercolor gives you, like on this simple hair, this is the, um, this is the card I watercolored. And you see here, you know, I did some shading, but you can really see that translucence in the pink. So what you would do is you'd add some water and then the top of this acts as a palette. Now, if you don't have um, this kind of setup, you can use any kind of plastic. Um, you know, like I did, that's why I said in the supply list a reusable plastic dish or whatever, you know, you can use anything as a palette. So the more water you add to this, the paler it's gonna be. Now, it's also gonna be more watery, so be careful on your paper, if you use a really thin paper um, and you add a lot of water to it, it may curl or buckle. So, um, and again, this, you know, because you're adding so much water, you want to um, make sure that um, you use the ink that is appropriate for, um, it's going to hold with the water. And uh, like I said, I use the archival ink on these. Now, the thing about watercolors, if you put, um, if you've got too much color in an area, let me pick up some extra color. And, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want it that dark. The great thing about it is make sure your brush is clean. And you just, if you just add some water to that area, you could either spread out the color, but you could also blot some away. So you do have some control. The, the key to that is if you have to blot some colors, make sure you add clean water to the area and blot with a clean, rag. Otherwise you can transfer other colors to it. And the more times you go over, the wetter it's going to be. So the more likely it is that um, the, the uh, paper might buckle or um, if it's not a good quality paper, um, it could also, you know, the layers of it can start peeling away. So I'm going to just pick up a little more solid color here to uh, do some of that shading. Now you could also go into a darker color if you really want some deeper, deeper color. And that's a little too deep for me. It's amazing how much color the brush will hold. So I'm just going to come in and kind of work that color up. If, um, if your brush is too wet, you're getting too much water, you can also... Um, you know, just clean it, dry it off in um in a rag, and then you know go back in with a with a uh, dryer brush too. 
And I'm just adding a little deeper color under the flowers because I imagine there would be some shadow there. If you have a, if you're in a hurry, you have a heat gun, you can um, you can dry things off in between or when you're done, if you don't want to wait for it to dry, but something like this doesn't take that long to dry. Okay. And now I'm just going to do the flowers on her head and I just put some water directly on the colors because I wanted a pretty bold blue on these flowers. This is where, um, see this, um, no, it's not um, focusing, but the, you, I think you can see there that the, the point of this brush is uh, comes to a pretty thin point, which is helpful because um, you, you know, you can get some detailed areas, which is nice. This paint must be a little drier. I'm having trouble getting some good color. Here we go. Um, or, you know, I mean, even though it's got a nar narrow tip, if you don't press down, if you do press down, it will get a pretty big area. So it's a pretty versatile brush. And then Um, if you want to do some shading, put down um, the area where you want the darkest color first, because then you can just add some water and spread that out. Once you put, when you put the paint on the um, on the brush, that's always going to be the darkest deepest color. So if you paint that where you want the darkest color first, that generally works out better for you. And then I'm going to do an orange beak again. I'm very classic, you know, yellow chick, orange beak. In real life, how orange are their beaks? I don't know. I've seen little chicks. I can't tell you if they're bright orange. I, I'm guessing not, but for some reason, you know, must be cartoons and storybooks and stuff. That's how I picture them. Oh, good, Kathy. That's it. Yeah, this would be a good class to watch again. And um, while you're coloring, hopefully I'm giving you some decent tips here. So there you go. She looks like she has lipstick on. I put that on pretty bold, but it's okay. So if you're interested, if you guys are interested in more watercolor classes, this is just like a basic, um, but let me know. Cause um, you know, we can do some other techniques and things. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got a puddle here of yellow ink. So I'm gonna, just clean that up before I close this. Um, the other thing is you can use um, for um, for watercolors or to paint with, um, if you don't actually have watercolors, is you can use your ink pads. And um, so if you, and this has a palette, built in. So if you squeeze in the middle of your ink pad, you'll see some of the ink comes up onto the top of your ink pad. And that's almost any brand of ink pad you can buy. And um, again, you just use some water with a brush and you can pick up 
that color and mix it. And there you go. You've got you've got paints. So now this isn't blending quite as nice, but probably because I didn't add as much water, the more water you add. If you didn't want to use the top of your ink pad, although you can then just, you know, dry it off, um, you could also use, like, if you had another piece of plastic, like a, um, a you know, like a plastic container, um, or, and of course I don't have anything here, I'll just use um, the plastic bag here because it is easy cleanup. Um, if you had a piece of, like, acetate or a plastic bag, I guess, or, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like pa packaging from um, from a some kind of uh, any kind of packaging, some kind of plastic. You can just rub the ink right on that piece of plastic, and then add your water, and you've got a palette. So, and you can even mix colors that way. You can add another color to this, and um, you add some blue, get get some green. So, if you want to if you don't have watercolors and you have some ink pads and you don't know if you want to buy them, if you don't know if you like painting, um, this is a good way to, to, to practice, to, to just get a, an idea. Um, those, um, nonstick sheets too. If you have one of those, those work great. People use those all the time. And, um, or the oven liner uh, sheets. Cause any, any slick surface. Oh, my, this bag had holes in it. So when I rubbed the ink pad, I was wondering why I was getting those dots of color. Okay, so there's some painting for you. And then last but not least is markers. Now my markers are water um, water-based markers. And there's a lot, of, most of the markers out there, reasonably priced markers that you'll find out there are even Crayola, things like that. Those, they are water-based. So again, you want to be careful with your ink. Um, they won't run as much if, as long as the ink is dry. And that's no matter what ink you use, make sure it's completely dry before you add your color to it. Um, so these are traditional and I've had these markers for a very long time because I don't color with markers a lot. So um, they last me a long time. These are um, Marvy and, and Tombow. Um, these are ones that have survived. Some of them, some of the ones I've had for a long time, too long. Um, they're better if you store them upside down because the ink, well, you can use both sides, but I mostly use the brush side. So the ink will stay close to the brush, keep the brush um, moist. Um, so I'm going to color this guy. And markers are going to give you a bolder look than, than the watercolors. Now, of course, pencil, you can do either way. But if you want a bold look and you want uh, a quick stroke, marker is the way to go. So... Actually, I'm going to do his hat first. Now, there are the new, I guess they're not really new anymore, but the alcohol-based markers, like the Copic markers, I have not gotten into them because, and they are expensive. And Close to My Heart has alcohol-based markers, and I haven't tried them because, like I said, I just, markers are not my preferred way to color. So, it's a lot of money to invest if you don't. And there are so many tips out there. If you're interested in learning, you it's a whole new way to learn how to color because they um, you can use them to shading and they're they're so beautiful. But um, it's just just not my thing. So I'm warming up by doing some smaller areas here. And um, basically. There's not a whole lot of shading you can do with a single marker because once you put the color on, that's pretty much the color. Now, you can go down and put another layer on and it's going to be a little darker, but you're not going to get the same kind of effect you do with a, um, 
a watercolor or a colored pencil. So that's the beauty of the alcohol ink markers because they do have, you know, a, a wide spectrum of colors. So you can go in with a light color and then you go in with the dark color and you, you know, put in the dark color, then you go back with the light color and you kind of blend it out. Um, the people who are good at it, I, I, on YouTube, I've watched a lot of videos. They're so good at it and they make it look so easy. But I'm guessing that if I went and tried to do it the first time, it wouldn't be as easy as they make it look. So the heart, my hardest part with a marker is, you know, like this is a too big of an area for me to do a full stroke through the whole area. So then in the middle, you have a little bit of a a line because you saw I did half of it here and then I did the other half. So that's um, my trouble with markers. But again, the alcohol markers, they don't leave those kinds of lines because they, they blend better. Um, now, if I had a darker yellow, I can go back in with the darker yellow and add some, um, some shading. And that would probably work. Well, look at there. If you put enough, you just gotta want to be careful that you don't get your paper to peel. You want a good quality paper, no matter what medium you're using, you want a good quality paper. And of course, the smoother the paper, um, the smoother your lines are gonna look and the easier it gets to easier it is to color on them. So he was pretty easy. Like yeah, Kathy's saying they practice a lot to get them look so nice. And, and yeah, I believe it is a big learning experience and totally worth it if you like to color, you know. Um, if the, I, I got to say, if they were a little less expensive, I might try it. But for the occasional coloring I do, um, eh, I haven't been ready to invest yet. At some point I might, but I like all these all these other mediums. So I've got what works for me. So I think you can see that um, it definitely was faster to color with the marker than it was with either the colored pencil or um, the watercolor because they're a little more fiddly. Um, so basically it's up to you, whatever way you like. I'm gonna put just put these all aside so I can get out my card kits and we can assemble. Does anybody have any questions about coloring? And always good to work on scrap paper. make a lot of chick cards. I got a lot of sample chicks here. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to do this, um, this brown card first. And some of my papers in these cards are slightly different from the samples and what you got. You got exactly what is here in these samples. I just ran out of paper in a couple of spots. Um, so I just substituted a few things. So this is a top folding card, which is a little different. And here's a um, helpful hint for um, conserving paper. So a, not, a normal standard card is... Uh, when folded is four and a quarter by five and a half. Scrapbooking paper is 12 by 12. This is half of a letter size sheet, eight and a half by 11. But scrapping booking paper is 12 by 12. So if you were to cut four and a quarter out of the 12 by 12, you only get 
two cards. You get two cards out of the letter size eight and a half by 11, but you only also only get two cards out of a 12 by 12 because four and a quarter and four and a quarter is eight and a half, which only leaves you three and a half extra inches on the end. If you cut it four, so this is four by 11. So when I fold it in half, it's still gonna be five and a half, like a standard card. You can see these are all the same height, but this one is just a quarter of an inch narrower than these two. Because if you cut your paper, if you cut a 12 by 12 paper, you cut off an inch from one end and you get it to the 11 inches, then you cut three pieces, four inches wide. So three pieces, four by 11, you can get three cards out of one 12 by 12. And nobody really notices it's only a quarter inch shorter. So that's a way to conserve cardstock. Not that we don't all have tons of cardstock and we probably don't need to save it, but you know. So on the 11 inch side, we're gonna score this at five and a half. try not to knock down my water. That's That was the next thing after I knocked down the camera and had trouble setting everything up. I'm like, oh my God, the next thing I'm gonna do is spill my water over everything. So now we have our brown background and that's just gonna go down flat, centered on the front of the card. There's my tape. Even my gun's giving me technical difficulties today. And I hope everything doesn't go as wrong in August as it did in July. Okay. So that's just down flat. Now this panel, the um the with the kind of ferns on it, and I just have a, a, a pink um paper is going to be put up with foam tape. But the first thing I did was I cut out, so I cut out my, my panel and I'm going to, you're going to get directions on the sizes for everything. Um, I'll mail that after class. So what I did was I used a, not that one. I used a die cut. You could use a punch if you have one big enough, but I didn't have one big enough for what I wanted. So what I did was I put a die cut, a circle die cut in the corner here, and I taped it on and I put it through my die cutting machine. Now you could trace this and you can just cut a curve or whatever. Um, but you know, it was easy for me to use my die. So I put it through and I have my little cutout here for my little birdie to be flying out of. So we're just going to put foam tape on here on this panel. To use a lot of a million little little tiny pieces. I'm just taking off the backing over my garbage to try to keep the mess at a minimum. And then we're going to center this, 
the top, what's left of the top, and the other sides on the brown panel. Don't press down too hard. And then we're gonna do our little flying chick with the hat, and we're gonna put some foam tape on him too. I don't know if I closed my door all the way because it's creaking back there, but I have my window open. So I don't know if it's creaking because there's a slight breeze or um, I don't know, maybe there's a ghost, but it's weird because now I guess it's not closed quite all the way and that's why it's creaking. Okay, so um, if you noticed, I cut your dovetails for you. So, and this stamp set, uh, well, let me put this down. I'll show you in a minute. So, and I'm just going to put this about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the, the ferny panel there. Um, this is the stamp set, and it's called So Tweet, and you can get just the stamp set, or you can get the stamps and the thin cuts to, you know, cut out all the bird, the chicks like I did. And um, these sayings, um, happy bird day, one cool chick, you're so tweet. And the, the flower, the heart, and the butterfly, they all come with the kit. So I think there's one, one or two stamps that I stamped from a different set. Um, and then we've got these little teeny flowers. So hopefully you were able to get those out of the envelope without losing them. And we're going to put little teeny tiny pieces of foam tape on those too. I tried to make um, this card look, of course I use this pink panel, so not so much. I tried to make it look a little more masculine or not masculine, but you know, for a boy. So you got a girl one, a boy one. So they weren't all girly, but you can, um, if these papers don't work for whatever occasion you want to send them, you can always use, it was a very florally uh, paper collection, so. But I think this one works nice for a guy. And you can, um, you know, switch and switch them around. If you are interested in this paper collection, it's called Lovely and it is only through in the catalog through the end of August. So if you did um, want the paper collection, let me know soon. And I'm just putting the flowers around the end of the banner. So this is really what yours is going to look like. And then you can see the f they're raised up a bit. All right. So on the inside of the card, I was not going to waste this corner that we cut out. So um, put it on the inside, right? So this stamp is one of the stamps that doesn't come with the collection, uh, sending many wishes your way. Um, this is from an all occasions um, stamp set, which I use a lot in class. Um, it is no longer available, but I have good news that I just saw in the new catalog that starts September 1st, that there's going to be a different one of these sets that's going to have a whole lot of uh, different occasions on them, which which will be great. So if you want some smaller kind of greetings like these for all different occasions, um, keep that in mind for the new catalog because the, they're, they're very handy. And sometimes you just, you know, you don't want a huge greeting. You just want, want something smaller, especially if you're going to put it on the front of the card. Um, so I'm going to um, put a piece of on all three of these pieces. Now this piece 
this the you know the corner was cut out of the front but this piece was a punched circle that i used with a punch you could also use a die cut if you had a die cut the right size um this one is uh, one and three one and three quarter inches although you could use another size um so i'm just going to put adhesive on all three pieces here so they're ready to go and i'm going to put this one in the middle except i'm only going to tack it down on the right hand side and i'm going to hold this side up because when i put this circle down i don't want i want um a partial circle like this one so i want the edge of it to go under this greeting so that's why i'm going to keep this up until i put it get it where i want it and again the end is going to go off the side here so that it's cut off and it's a straight edge. So after I get that on, I can turn it around and I could just take my scissors or if you prefer a craft knife and a ruler and I'm just gonna trim that straight so you have another kind of arc. Okay, Kathy, you want the papers and Sharon, you want the papers, okay. I will add those to the list. Um, and so this one, you can, oh, did I add this one higher or did I? No, it's just about even. I guess I stuck it under there. So what I'm gonna do since I already stuck this down. So this is what happens when you make your cards months before you have the class. I'm just going to trim that. And you could do that with a circle too if you didn't want to maneuver the two pieces. So I'm just going to trim that and stick it. So if you haven't stuck it down yet, you can go ahead and stick it down first with this over it, with this uh, pink strip over it, or you can do what I did and just trim it so that it doesn't stick up past the edge of the card so that's what yours is going to look like so that's a fun um top fold card we've done them before but it's you know it's fun to do a little different direction than normal. Just pause for a minute so you guys can get caught up if you need to. put all my supplies back where they're supposed to go so I can't find them next time. pieces for this graduation card next. I got lots of perks and pieces all over the place here. And you'll see my paper is a little different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my um, mortarboard and diploma here. And these are stamps that I've had forever. 
um, you you can find these graduation stamps everywhere. Luckily, they were approximately the right size to work on my ch chick. If here's a little helpful hint, if you cannot find the stamp you need in the correct size, or um, if you can't find the stamp at all, or if it's not in the right size, you can go online, find an image, and print it out on your cardstock. I have been known to do that. Even though I have thousands of stamps, you'd think I have everything I needed, but apparently not. But if anybody um, needed to borrow these stamps, you are more than welcome to do so. They're handy to have around, but I don't use them a lot, obviously. So this year I'm gonna make a couple and next year I'm gonna make a couple more, so. Okay, so um, again, my paper is a little different here because I was being frugal and using what I had uh, instead of digging into another paper pack. So I could use the green, but I'm going to use the floral. And this be a little busier looking, but so you should have two of these little skinny strips and two of these wider ones. Now, what I did was let me show you here. So I had my, my strip of paper, and what I did was, this strip is a little wider, but pretend it's the right width. So if you have your strip of paper here, um, I took my ruler at an angle. And I went ahead with my craft knife and I just cut at an angle. And that's how you get your first angle cut. Let me do it on a scrap paper. I don't want to cut an envelope. Okay, let's do this again. So, I went ahead and, and I'll have this, the measurement in your uh, cutting directions. So I went ahead and I cut triangle. Now you can save this for something else, but now you have your angle cut and this is an inch wide so I took my ruler and my ruler is an inch so I just lined up the edge of it on that and I just cut parallel to that angle and that gave me this angle piece and if you're making several of these cards like I was making several kits then you just keep going up and up and up now, I also added this accent strip. So after I cut my one inch wide piece, I cut one a quarter of an inch on the same angle. And then you've got your decorative strip. And so if you had a 12 inch strip of paper like I did, you could keep going and you can make a whole bunch of these. And you know I'll do something with that corner at some point. Okay. So the one we're going to put on the front is the one that has the stamp on it, One Cool Chick. So I guess I could have 
Well, it'd be the opposite direction. I was going to say, I guess I could have put the pink side down. If I had stamped on that one. So I'm going to put this up about, again, three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the blue paper. And then this piece is a little, I made sure this, I'm kind of anal, so I want to make sure I pick the right one that matches the design. So it's that one. And my tape is a quarter of an inch and this is a quarter of an inch and I don't drive straight. So I'm never going to get that on straight. So this is one eighth inch wide. Um, tape. So I'm just going to put a strip of this on here. Or if you had a glue uh, pen, you can, you know, just put a strip of glue down there. And this has uh, backing on it. So if you, it did only have the tape runner, it, um, you could um, put it on and then just make sure there's no tape overhanging the edges. And I'm just going to put this, I'm going to leave a tiny, it's not even a quarter, it's probably about three sixteenths, bigger than an eighth, not as big as a quarter, above that, uh, the first strip. So just a little bit of spacing there. And then we're going to put our chick on with, um, what chick are we going to use? It's some chick. So if you don't need a graduation card, you can put this chick on. Obviously he's smart because he's got glasses. So, and um, you can be done. You know, this can be a birthday card or a congratulations card or um, whatever. You can be done. But if you want to make it into a graduation card, then you can add the motorboard and... Um, Diploma, which we're also going to put on with foam tape, except on the cap here. Um, it's over his forehead here, so you don't want to put a piece of foam tape there. You just want to put some at the top. I don't know why I have to keep looking for my scissors. I keep putting it back in the right spot. So um, you can put it right at the top and um, if you want a little piece of adhesive here you can add a little tape right there and that'll stick to his forehead so it doesn't fly off like you know all the non-responsible chicks who don't put their caps on correctly before graduation ready to throw them up in the air This one I cut a little bigger border around the cap and the diploma than I did on the sample card. And there you go. Let's show you that. Isn't it cute? So on the inside, I stamped congratulations for you assuming it was a graduation card but again if you're not using it as a gradu graduation card 
you can go ahead and attach your strip right over the congratulations. And then you can add your own greeting. So I kind of made it versatile for you because I know not everybody's got a graduation coming up. But I thought this piece was just a fun accent to the inside. And again, I'm going to put my eighth inch tape on this strip. You could also put, you know, uh, if you had small blue dots or little tiny pieces of tape. So I'm going to put this one above the congratulations. And there you go. There's your inside. So um, on this card, you're going to need a thin black pen or marker if you want to add the stitching line. I didn't include that in your supply list, so I will wait a second in case you have to retrieve one. I didn't tell you where you had a score on this card because mine was already folded, but I assume you guys all know the measurements and it would have been either folded just in half or scored at four and a quarter inches and folded. I just realized as I pulled this next one out that we didn't, I didn't do that on this one. All right. So on to our last, and again, this is eight and a half by five and a half. So we will score at four and a quarter. And your, um, you could use that one if you want, but your floral flannel goes on first, centered on the card. See, I didn't even use all the papers in this collection, but so there's some nice designs. And then, uh, we're going to put on the yellow panel. Now, the yellow, as all close to my heart card stocks, they are different shades on the front and the back. And I know you can't really see that on the camera. Um, it's way too subtle. But I use the deeper color. So I put my adhesive on the lighter color. It doesn't matter if you've already done it or if you like the, the lighter shade better, that's fine. I am sticking this onto the card closer to the top. I'm looking to have a, a basically an equal border uh, around the three sides up on the left, the top, and the right of this piece of yellow cardstock, which leaves me a larger border at the bottom to put this UR tweet. Um, and I'm going to add foam tape to that. Backing doesn't want to stay on those pieces. 
and then this will be centered left to right at the bottom with about the same amount of spacing above and below. All right, so this white panel, um, you see I've already stamped your little butterflies and your little hearts. But what I did um, to give it a little more interest, I created that stitched look border around the edges. And to do that, you're just gonna need a black pen or marker and a ruler, although you don't have to use a ruler. Um, so I put my ruler at on the eighth inch line. Now the secret to making this look good is to not worry. If you try to get all your little lines the same exact size, one, you have to worry about spacing at the top and the bottom beginning and the end of the line. And let me tell you, if you try to make it perfect, it doesn't look as good as if you don't worry about it. A little imperfection actually looks better. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna start about an eighth of, inch, eighth of an inch at the top here. And hopefully you can see me. I'll, I'll pull it up to the camera, but I am just, I'm just making sure my pen is working. I am just going to make little lines against the ruler all the way down. And you can see that the lines are not all the same length. There's not the same amount of spacing between each of the lines, but yet it looks fine. Hopefully you think it looks fine. So I, and you know, on this, on the bottom one, okay, so I have more space at the bottom than at the top, but if I had put another one, it would have had it either been really short or it would have been long and extended down. So I just ended it early. And when I come around and I, again, put my eighth inch line on the edge of the cardstock here. I'm just going to start in the corner right underneath where that last line ended. The tip on this pen is so um, small. Sometimes the first time you try to make a mark, it needs a little help. So see, I don't know if you can see that, but I started right underneath there and there's a little space between them. And again, perfectly fine. Different size spaces, different size lines. I don't know why my camera doesn't want to focus when it's up here. I guess maybe it needs bifocals. And then we're just going to keep going around. Now, if you're somebody who, who likes to sew, then you have a sewing machine. You can actually sew on your paper. They sell stamps that make these lines. They make die cuts that die cut shapes with stitched lines in them. So there's lots of different options. So it's not nearly perfect. My top lines come up a little high. Some of my lines are longer than others. But in the end, nobody is going to look when you've got your card all together. Nobody's going to look and go, oh, my God, those lines need to be more perfect because it's just a cute little accent. I know you guys are probably still working on that because you're thinking about it and you're thinking too hard because we all do it the first time we do it. But 
I am going to go ahead and attach mine to my card and it just goes on flat. Whoops. And it goes centered on the big yellow panel. If you're bored one day and you want to practice making stitches, just get out your ruler and pencil and play around a little. Might make you feel more comfortable. Okay, so I've got my little watercolor painted chick here. She curled up a little bit. And she's going to fit right between the hearts and the butterflies. And the inside of this one is really super simple. Left your space here for whatever greeting you want to put in or if you want to write your own message. And this one is going to get put about a quarter, um, not quite a quarter of an inch up from the bottom and from the fold line. Whoops. And then this one, again, the same spacing here up at the top, a little less... Mm, a little more than an eighth, a little less than a quarter from the top and the sides. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know why I can't get it straight. And that's it. So these are three little chip cards. Nobody's made a comment in a while, so hopefully you're all still there. Well, I see you're there in the, uh, I know there's, I can see people watching, so hopefully everybody's okay. I am going to leave the, the stream going just for a few minutes here so you guys can catch up. And if you have any questions to ask, go ahead and ask them. I'm just going to clean, clean up my stuff while I'm waiting because I get antsy just sitting, sitting staring at the screen. Oh, actually, actually, well, after I clean up here, I'm going to show you the next cards for the next class. So, every time I go on, to go past the left side of my computer, I hit the, hit the cord that plugs in my extra monitor. I always think I've cleared it, but apparently not. Mom says she's working away, and Sharon says it's super cute. Glad you like them.
Let me know if anybody needs the stamp set. Okay, so I will, when I finish uh, straightening up and getting everything together, I will send you an email with the cutting instructions for the cards if you want to make more. Um, and the link to this video, which will stay up, um, it'll be a different link now than the other email. So, um, so I will send that out so you have it. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. And okay, here are the cards that will be the next class. This is... Um, the Isabella collection. Um, this is in the new, it's new, but it's July, August. I don't know where July went to. So it feels like it just came out, but it actually came out at the beginning of July. And um, the catalog that is I'm talking about. So this is the Isabella collection. And these cards, if you took the Stars and Sparklers card class, they were done with the Project Life are the picture my life cards and so this these again are done with the picture my life collection for Isabella and um, they are so there's actually no stamping um, it's just these beautiful cards put together with the cardstock and, and a lot of glitter paper and shimmer trim and uh, these fun sequins so this is going to be um, uh, on August 29th, which is a Sunday um, at 2 p.m. as usual. It is not Labor Day weekend. It is the week before Labor Day. Um, I know people usually have plans Labor Day weekend, so I didn't schedule it then. Um, so let me know. I need to know by the 14th if you want to take this because I need to get the order the supplies. Now I see that Kathy is asking how much um for the chick i assume it's the chick stamps and thin cuts and i'm looking that up for you right now cuz i don't remember offhand okay so the stamp set only for just the stamps is 10.95 the stamps plus the thin cuts is 18.95 and um the thin cuts, um, you know, it's the three chicks and the butterfly and the little flower, the little tiny flower. And, um, yeah, I didn't cut out the butterfly. So, Kathy, you do... Okay, no, you're saying, yes, the chicks, that, that's what you wanted to know. Sharon says, I'm on the next workshop. Does that mean you're working so fast you're just working ahead to the next one? That's just the way you are. Okay, so the, the cards, um, that's tw that workshop cost is $20. And again, that's on August 29th at 2 o'clock. So let me know if you are interested in that. Otherwise... Okay, Kathy, just let me know when you're ready and I will sign you up for these these cards. Um, and I know you wanted the, uh, you, both Kathy and Sharon wanted these, um, the paper collection for the, the chick card. So I will um, write that down. And um, if nobody has anything else to say quick, I'm gonna sign off. All right, well, enjoy um, the rest of the day, the rest of the weekend, um, and I will see you soon. Thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you enjoyed the class. I did too. Bye.